Hello. Um, first of all, say to everyone good afternoon and thank you for being here. Um, I'm quite impressed for all the people that is here on the last day, the last talk before the last one. Um, keep touching the wall. <laughs> and I hope you guys are still here after the second slide, hopefully. So, um, my name is Rafa, and I work as a security consultant and security researcher for MWR Info Security in the UK. Um, that is my email address, in case you want to send me an email after the talk. I doubt it, but <laughs> um, this is our lab's website, where the guys and me included, you know, put our research. But enough of me. Let's see what this talk is going to cover. Um, we are going to be seeing different type of USB attacks. Um, and we are going to understand the impact of this if they were to be exploited. Um, we are going to oh, we are going to be um, a, looking at different approaches for security assessing, assessing USB uh, drivers and how to identify bugs. Um, we also give details how we can actually implement um, these bugs in a USB hardware device itself. So the talk will break down in the following parts. Um, first, we explain different type of USB attacks, um, and we'll see how USB has impacted um, our society. Um, we'll um, look at different uh, fasting approaches for fasting USB device drivers. Um, we'll see how um, these crashes can actually uh, be debugged um, and analyzed, and we'll see how can we actually get that bug and that um, uh, exploit and implemented in a hardware device itself. Um, and we have also some, a few demos here and there to actually um, supplement all this information. So, once upon a time, um, the serial port used to be our best friend for connecting um, a hardware devices to our computer. Um, it also was our uh, worst enemy when it came to finding uh, drivers for unsupported devices, and we all have felt that pain. Um, but the era of serial port is unfortunately far gone. And now we have the USB, the plug and play technology, and the mi mini USB device uh, pen drives. And it's actually a bit of a pain in the ass to actually find um, a computer with inbuilt serial port. And for those that do um, hardware debugging, it's a bit frustrating. Um, there's some danger with USB. Um, and we have seen that um, companies has, well, lately has been some um, a concerns about USB uh, port itself. And we have seen this mainly at corporate level. Um, we don't have to actually go uh, very far to actually um, identify, uh, remember the famous uh, configure which actually es exploited the auto-run functionality um, and spray, eh, 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 spread as a worm by, passing, by using the USB devices uh, pass from hand to hand to exploit uh, this vulnerability. And we have also uh, found um, there is, as in any software, USB uh, driver has also got vulnerabilities uh, which can be triggered and, and exploited from development mistakes. Uh, but we don't have to get um, too technical when it comes to um, exploiting USB attacks. Um, an individual can come to your company um, or to your organization um, pretending to be the cleaner after working hours and actually plus a plug a USB keyboard and after a, a period of time actually obtain a lot of um, information. Um, and we, we all have seen in the news um, when a businessman or a politician has actually lost a pen drive um, with, uh, containing a lot of sensitive information and actually uh, uh, compromising this data. But we have seen some concerns. Um, organization has started to actually think about that USB is not actually that secure. Um, major operating system has started to disable the auto-run functionality. Um, at corporate level, they are starting to use a USB encrypted pen drive in case this gets lost. Um, and 
even we have seen in security policies that now a, a computer standard build have a policy where they disable the, the USB port itself. Um, and there is also even software out there that actually allow you to set different USB devices can, that can be used in a, in a computer depending on the serial number. But there is still dangers there because at the end of the day it's up to the user um, to plug that USB device into the, into the computer. Um, and that involves security uh, education and security awareness. Uh, that is something very difficult to combat with. But how did I get involved in this research? How did, did I start looking into USB devices? Well, it all came through um, one of our clients. Um, they have this, uh, the, they have this um, a hard piece of hardware that does um, stuff. Um, and they wanted this to be tested before the, the new release was actually um, out. So we tested it. We, the project took time in a period of two weeks. And we had to test um, the project involved a little bit of everything, from protocol fuzzing, uh, reverse engineering, and functionality hacking. It was a really great piece of work. Basically, it was um, hack the hardware um, in a period of two weeks um, as you could. Um, and of course, included the new feature that was implementing in this new release, which was the, the USB port. So we start looking at the USB port. Um, we took different approaches, black box, black box, uh, white box testing, which was a little bit boring, and it required a little bit of source code review, as we all know. Um, uh, black box testing, which was the fun part, because you don't actually see what you're sending. Well, you see what you're sending, but you don't see exactly what's going on. Um, and we face the challenge of fasting USB device drivers. And of course, the build based testing, which really helped when it came to doing this project. So before we go any further, let's have um, a little bit of technical background about the, uh, the, the USB communication between the host device and the, the host computer and the USB device. Um, the enumeration is the phase of communication between uh, the host PC and the USB device. And it's where the PC actually uh, learns uh, information about the, the device itself, about its identity. Um, and the descriptors are data structures that the USB device uh, sent to the host in the enumeration phase and provide information about the configuration of the device, um, the manufacturer type, and its, pro its properties. Um, as I say, the enumeration is the device identification, and it happens as soon as you plug the USB device in your computer. It's automatic, and in some operating systems, um, it's visible to us, such as Windows, where a pop-up Windows, uh, well, where a Windows appear, um, uh, telling you that a new USB device has been identified. And it's in this phase where the scripts are sent containing general information about the configuration of the device. We have different types of descriptors, and here we have some important ones. We have the device descriptor, which um, describes general information about the device and, and provides information such as um, the vendor ID, and the product ID, and the serial number. It's in the product ID and the vendor ID that we are going to be particularly interested because these are used to identify which device driver is going to be used. Um, then we have the configuration descriptor, which as it names dictates, provide um, configuration information about the device, um, mainly relating to power management. Then we have the interface descriptor, which provides um, uh, information about an interface within a configuration. We have the endpoint descriptor that provides information about the, the, the bandwidth that will be used in the USB port, USB bus. And we have the stream descriptor, which is um, additional information that the device, the, the USB device provides uh, to the host in the enumeration process. And this is human um, readable uh, data and provides information such as the manufacturer name, the product name, and the serial number. And here we can see how a device descriptor looks like. And we can see um, the vendor ID and the product ID being those what are going to be used to identify the, the USB device, that, um, the driver that will be used in the communication. And here we have a string, de a string descriptor. Um, we have the 
as we can see, it's human readable data, and we have the manufacturer name and the product name. So, everyone touching the wall? Yeah? <laughs> so, we start looking um, as we were, at, at the same time, we were reviewing um, source, Linux USB uh, driver source code. We were discussing how we were going to be performing um, USB drivers fasting. Um, we came with three different approaches, which which were the approaches that fitted uh, more to us in the time frame that we had and in the project uh, type that we were performing. And, and I want to stop at this moment and say that I'm not selling here a um, fuzzing framework tool or a uva fuzzing technique. This is what um, it worked for us, and I hope it gives you some ideas. Uh, we took three different approaches, a virtualized approach using QM. Um, a network approach using USB over IP, and a hardware approach, consisting actually in implementing a hardware that will send more data to the to the target system. So QEM, QEM is an, is an open source um, machine emulator, ma machine emulator, a virtualizer, and it's quite cool because it allows us to emulate USB uh, devices from the host computer to the guest operating system as if this was actually physically plugged into the, into the device, into the, into the target system. Um, the idea of this um, a fasting approach was to actually have a environment with our a host system and a virtual machine um, with a, the same, a, 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 um, I forgot to say, <laughs> that actually uh, we perform a source code review because the operating system that was being used in, in, in the hardware that we were testing um, was Linux. Um, as we all know, secure operating system. Um, so we, what we did in, in, the, in, the, in the virtual machine, we installed Linux, the SAT version that was using in the hardware device that we were testing. Um, with the idea of uh, emulating multiple USB devices from the host computer, to the guest virtual machine, sending malformed data to the guest virtual machine. Um, for this, what we did was to recompile QM with multiple fasting cases, being each fasting case a USB device to be emulated into the virtual machine. The advantages of this approach is that it gave us a very quick startup to start fasting USB device, device drivers. Um, it required uh, very low, uh, very little resources when it comes to software and hardware. First of all, because QM is is, um, is open source, and you have it in a virtual machine, um, and it just requires a little bit of programming here and there to actually make this work. The main disadvantages is that we were um, we lack from a proper fasting engine. Engine, and when, what I mean with a fasting engine is actually something that. It's going to be creating fuzzing cases for our fuzzing. And we were relying in, in uh, text files with containing malformed data. And every time that we wanted to create um, a bunch of, of, of fuzzing cases, we had to recompile QM with, uh, with, all, our, with all our fuzzing cases. So we took a second approach. Um, USB over IP, with the, with the aim of overcoming some of the problems that we found in the previous approach. Um, the idea of this is actually to get USB packets and sending over the network to the target system. For that, we look at um, a, um, a, it's a Linux module called, called USB IP, which actually uh, allows you to legitimate uh, share USB devices over the network. So we, we look at this, um, this module and we got a couple of Wireshark captures. Um, we see what was, what was being sent as it is also open source. Open source. We look at uh, the source code to actually create a little tool that will allow us um, to send, um, um, to replicate USB IP packets. So our environment looks something like this. We have the attacker system um, with this tool that we created to replicate the USB IP packets. 
we implemented an uh, already existing network fuzzing engine, which will be creating our fuzzing cases. Um, the attacker would send the USB uh, packets over IP. At the target system, we would have the USB, over IP, USB IP module installed that will be in charge of taking the USB packet that we are sending with the malformed data, removing the IP header from the packet, and sending the USB packet directly to the, to the drivers. The advantages of, the, of this is that we had a fasting engine. We use a, a already network system fasting engine, and it could create the different fasting cases. The dis disadvantages is that we were relying on a piece of software, and in this case being USB IP, um, meaning that any problem in this uh, software would actually uh, affect the reliability of our software, of our faster, sorry. So, the third approach. Um, Hardware faster. Um, the idea of this approach was actually to create um, a hardware device that could actually um, be plugged directly into the target system and send malformed data. Um, this we didn't get to implement this approach because it's a quite a long-term project, I would say, um, and it requires more than two weeks that we had for the testing. But the ideas that we thought about it um, were two approaches. The first approach would be to actually have the U this USB hardware that would create the fuzzing cases, um, impersonating um, a, U a USB, a specific USB devices or multiple USB devices, being plugged into the into the target system and actually send them mal malformed data. Um, the second approach that we thought with the hardware fuzzing, it would be an, a man-in-the-middle approach where we would actually have the a hardware device. Um, performing a man in the middle. So we will be plugging a USB device um, a, a, to this hardware. This hardware will take the USB packet um, in the fly, modify, put the malformed data, and send that directly to the, uh, to the hardware device. Um, as I say, it's a longer term, long, longer term project. Um, and I know there is already people out there um, trying or, or performing this type of hardware faster. So, um, we were reviewing um, the, so, the, so, the driver source code, and well, we were checking. We left the fasting, the, fa the faster running. Um, we were every now and then, as you know, when you perform any fasting, every now and then you go and check the fast if, uh, if if it has crashed, if it has identified something, and at the same time we were also um, uh, performing some uh, uh, USB uh, source code review. And just suddenly, while we were reviewing one of the um, drivers, USB driver source code, we found a development mistake, a vulnerability in one of the Linux USB device drivers that we were looking at. Oh, hold on. It's a pretty picture. Come. You guys keep touching the wall, yeah? Three seconds. Three seconds. <laughs> three Spanish seconds. And we found the bug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, 
We found a bug in one of the Linux USB driver bug, uh, device drivers. The bad news, um, for some political issues, I can't actually disclose as much as I would like. Um, in this slide, I would have had actually the vulnerability that I found, actually the device itself. And I cannot put the picture, so I say I'm gonna put a pretty picture. <laughs> um, all these uh, political issues happened not very long ago, um, actually a couple of days ago. So um, I have tried and I have, I would like to say here today that I'm hand over, um, but I'm not, because I've been working on this to actually show you as much as I can. Um, and so I had to modify a series of things to actually show you, you know, what is really going on without actually, you know what I mean. <laughs> so um, the vulnerable device, as I did this in Vegas, is Vegas Girl. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and it's a buffer overflow vulnerability that is happening in Tom, Dick, and Harry function. I know why is that name. I'm not going to say. Um, um, Tom, Dick, and Harry function, um, a function is in charge or is responsible for handling the um, USB uh, string descriptor. And if we go back to the technical background slides, the, um, the string descriptor uh, is, is that um, a data structure that send human readable uh, data. The manufacturer name, we saw that before. The manufacturer name, the product name, and the serial name. And it's actually data that we control because it's sent from the USB device to the host computer, which means that we can actually cause this, um, we can actually trigger this buffer overflow. So, um, USB string function is actually, um, well, it's not similar, but we can think of as a main copy or a string, string copy because we are actually copying from A to B and into a buffer. And we are, uh, uh, the buffer that we are uh, overflowing, uh, overflowing is used by an uh, element of, uh, of uh, one of the USB device structure. Um, so what, we, what is actually happening, we are just copying too much data in that buffer and allowing us to actually overwrite other elements of the data structure. And we'll see later what um, actually can, can happen with this. And what we're gonna do um, to demonstrate the, 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 the vulnerability, we are gonna do a kernel crash demo. So, for the kernel crash demo, as the QEMU fashion that we had before, what we are going to what we are going to have is um, um, a QEMU running and a virtual machine with Linux and with the vulnerable USB device uh, driver. And what we are going going to be doing is emulating our malicious um, Vegas malicious Vegas girl. That sounds big. <laughs> malicious Vegas girl uh, device. So. We start QEMU. Um, it's started. And we can see uh, here the vendor ID and the product ID, being those where uh, it's actually going to identify um, the device driver that is going to be used. Of course, it's not zero, 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 zero. And we are going to be looking at the data, in this case, A, that is going to be overflowing the buffer for the element, element of destruction. So we go to QEMU, and we go to QEMU um, admin console. And we are gonna emulate the USB device. And we get the kernel crash without actually showing EIP because it would be showing too much. So, For crash analysis, um, there are many tools out there for kernel. I'm gonna hold on. There are many tools out there for um, analyzing um, kernel crash. A, a majority of them based in GDB. I'm quite a big fan of what did really work for me in this project was KGDB because it actually allows you to set breakpoints 
um, in the kernel um, in live execution. So the environment that I have set up um, is KGDB in the in the debugger system. Um, the target system running the uh, Linux uh, the Linux with the vulnerable um, USB device driver connected with a serial connection, and the malicious USB device uh, plugged into the into the target system. Um, the target system having the uh, running the Linux uh, driver that would be um, will be debugged. So what I did, um, I implemented, I implemented um, this exploit in a hardware uh, device, and I use a PIC 18 family microcontroller, which is relatively um, easy to program, and you got a lot of guides out there to actually do this. Um, and I performed the malicious um, perform. I implemented the malicious Vegas girl device. Um, I fashioned the microcontroller with the with the shell code in order to exploit the, the device driver. And um, the device driver, my little baby, looks something like this, which I will show here, which is a PIC 18 f 14 k 550 So um, let's do a little bit of crash analysis, a uh, demo of, uh, of the crash analysis and the exploit demo that, that I implemented with this device. With the idea of what we're going to be seeing is um, we're going to be uh, seeing the environment uh, where I flash the, where I program the um, uh, Vegas uh, malicious device. I will be fa flashing the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the microcontroller with our shell code. And then we'll be uh, plugging this in the in the target system, and actually going through to actually see what is is going on with this exploit. Oh. Ta -da. I just showed the end of the demo. Very good. So this is my environment for um, for programming the USB device using MPLabs. Just really quite cool software. And I'm not very good doing demos. But that is going to be the, uh, a set of A's that will be um, the code that we're going to be executing in this demo. And these here are the different um, um, elements of the data structure that we are going to be overwriting. Um, there is a static address and a pop return. And we'll explain, I'm not going to get into details now uh, about this, but we'll explain this a little bit later. So we compile our, our source code, hopefully. It would be good to have an error in a demo. <laughs> and we're going to be flashing our microcontroller. The main reason for showing this in a demo is that this environment involves three laptops and, and the microcontroller itself um, plugging this around. It could be a little bit of a for trouble. I have problems with only one laptop. Imagine with three. <laughs> so we flash the, the microcontroller.
And what we do, this is going to be our um, debugger system, which is actually plugged with a serial uh, port to the target system with the uh, Vegas girl devices actually um, running. Um, what we are doing is starting a GDB to connect to the, to the remote system via serial port. We connect to the target system. And we send a breakpoint um, in Tom, Dick, and Harry function. That if, if we remember, is the function where the, um, where the enumeration process uh, uh, takes place and the um, a string descriptor is actually um, uh, passed from the device to the host computer. So we continue, we hit that function, and we set a breakpoint in USB string, which, which is going to be, the, be doing the copying into the, into the buffer. We continue, and there is our buffer, and we are going to see the status of our buffer at that stage. And as we can see at the moment, the buffer is empty. So we continue, we hit the USB string function again, and we look at the status of our buffer. And now we see that our buffer is legitimately filled with our set of, of A's. We continue, and this is where the, we overflow actually the buffer, and we, um, uh, set, uh, we, we actually overwrite the elements of the data structure, being the static address and the um, pop return. Um, now, the idea of the, of the um, static address and the pop return is to actually um, uh, get the um, get the um, pop return just exactly after um, the execution of the stack, and we'll see that later. So we uh, have. Uh, set, uh, we have se we have set a breakpoint um, where we are going to be writing the uh, pop return, and we see that we have control of ECX and EVX. ECX being the pop return, and EVX being a static address. And we'll see what this uh, static, uh, static address actually do. Uh, we set a breakpoint in 853 and we look at the status of the, the instruction at the address. So what we want to do is to actually, um, with this move from um, uh, ECX to EVX um, plus 3C, three, three, uh, three what we'll do, it will get uh, the pop return um, into EVX plus C, which will be the next instru instruction to be executed. Which will be here, which we, where we, where it is where we want to write our pop return. So we step in and we look at the status. So we've done al already the move of data, and we have our pop return just right after the instruction that we previously executed. You could, for reliable purposes, you could actually put the pop return um, a little bit further down. Okay, sorry. So we step in and we get into pop EAX. What pop EAX is going to be popping EAX and bringing execution to the next instruction, which is going to be um, um, a pointer with our shellcode uh, close to where our shellcode is. And we return and we'll be executing the address. And we get the segmentation fault. If we do backtrace, we can see the execution path. So we have the demo. Um, it's getting closer to the end. The recommendations. Um, disable not require USB drivers when you can. Actually try to um, 
access the, the, the USB uh, device driver that you need and actually just use the ones that you need. Uh, in that way, you actually will, will close down a little bit the, the, um, the attack vectors. And security test the USB drivers when possible. Um, and if you, if you have access to the source code, um, do a source code review. Or if not, you can also do black box testing. Um, and also in organization or company, always assess the use of, of USB risk. Um, implement security policies when required. Um, yeah, assess the risk. Um, a little bit of reference here, more reference here. And questions? Any questions? Thank you.